Hey y'all, so we're looking at the 2021 AP Physics 1 free response questions, and this is from the first administration. Um, I haven't taken a look at these in a lot of detail yet, but I'm going to try to read them carefully and try to do them right the first time. Um, so we're starting with uh, question one here. As usual, if I have any um, corrections, I'll put it in the description below, as well as link to the PDF solutions. I've been a little slow on getting them up, but the link will we'll we'll have the solutions eventually uh hopefully later today a stunt cyclist builds a ramp that will allow the cyclist to coast down the ramp and jump over several parked cars as shown above to test the ramp the cyclist start from the rest at the top of the ramp then leaves the ramp jumps over six car and lands on a second ramp h0 is the vertical distance between the top of the first ramp and the launch point theta zero is the angle of the ramp at the launch point of the horizontal x0 is the horizontal distance traveled M0 is the combined mass of the stunt cyclist and the bicycle. Derive an expression for X0 in terms of H0, theta0, M0, and physical constants. So a kinematics question, you know, I was kind of, I was kind of wondering if, uh, because this is the first year, it's going to be all mechanics only questions, that if kinematics would uh, be more relevant. So, um, so let's sort of set up our equations here. So we have an initial velocity we're going to launch here which we need to figure out. It's gonna launch, it's gonna travel, and then it's gonna, you know, the vertical distance from this point to this point is here. So we need, first step is to find the initial velocity. And from the initial velocity, then I will do kinematics to do this. So how do I find the initial velocity is then I would do conservation of energy. Now, um, one of the things we're gonna have to assume is that the energy in the wheels is pretty negligible to figure out the speed here because technically as he runs down here we're going to say there's no friction but the wheels are turning that is a consumption of some amount of energy but i don't have any information about the energy of the wheels so i'm going to have to assume that um, the wheels have a negligible amount of mass and thus a negligible amount of rotational kinetic energy so what we'll do is we'll say like here we have potential energy and it's going to get converted into kinetic energy here. So um, the potential energy is mgh, uh, which in the, the quantities we have here would be uh, m0, g, and h0. And then that gets converted to kinetic energy here, which is 1 half m v one half mv squared. So from energy equation point of view, we would say m0, g, h0 is going to equal one half m zero v zero squared, where v zero is the speed at this point. The masses cancel, and I find that v zero squared is equal to two g h zero. This will be useful for us when we do the kinematics. So now we're on the kinematics portion. How do we figure out the range or how far we traveled? There are some equations that you can memorize, but I I am not good at. I prefer not to memorize those things. So let's break down the initial velocity into its um, uh, initial, uh, sorry, the x components and the y components. This would be v0 cosine theta 0, and this would be v0 sine theta 0. And then what I like to do, or I teach my students, is we look at all the variables. Let's look in the uh, x direction. Which variables do we know? These are our five kinematic variables. The di horizontal displacement is x0. The initial velocity is v0 cosine theta 0. The final velocity is the same because there's no acceleration um, in the x direction. So the acceleration is zero and the time is um, what we need to figure out. Now what we can calculate from here from our kinematic equations, this is the kinematic equation I'm going to use, but a is zero in this case. So we're going to say that x zero is just v zero cosine theta zero times time. So I need to figure out what time is, and time is always dictated by the vertical direction. Now, the displacement in the vertical direction is zero, because from this point to this point, we've traveled a horizontal distance x zero, but the displacement vertically is zero. The initial velocity, we're going to say up is positive and down is negative. So if we're going to say up is positive, the initial velocity is v zero sine theta zero. The final velocity is unknown. The acceleration is negative g. Because acceleration, I'm saying the downward is the negative direction. So uh, acceleration is downward. And the time, we don't know. But we have three variables. And we can figure out time by using the exact same equation. So 
So here, the, um, the vertical displacement 0 is v0 sine theta 0 times t minus 1 half gt squared. And you can factor out a t, which is always how you want to solve things when you're dealing with um, uh, quad, you know, quadratics and t in your sense. So this tells us that t has to be 0, which is irrelevant, is not a relevant point for us. Because t equals 0 is just saying that we start there, our displacement is 0. That's sort of a trivial solution. So then we say v0 sine theta 0 is equal to 1 half gt. And we can solve for gt. Or this thing has to be 0. So therefore, um, t would have to equal 2 v0 sine theta 0 over g. And then we plug that into there. And so x0 is v0 um, cosine theta 0 times t, which is 2 v0 sine theta 0 over g, which is 2 sine theta 0 cosine theta 0 over g times v0 squared. OK, so I can't put it in terms of v0. It's not one of my options. But I know v0 squared from the energy equation, 2 g h0. So then this becomes, oh, I'm running out of space. Let me make a little space for myself down here. So then plugging that in, I'm going to get 2 sine theta 0, cosine theta 0. If you know your trig identities, this is sine of 2 theta, by the way. So you could write it like that. And that's 2g h0. The g's cancel. And so I'm going to write that as 2 h0 sine theta 0, cosine theta 0. And looks mostly right. I feel like that's about right. Uh, yeah. OK, cool. If the vertical distance between the top of the ramp and the launch point were 2h0 instead of h0, with no other changes of the first ramp, what is the maximum number of cars that the stunt cyclist could jump over? Justify your answer using the expression. OK, so he jumps over 6, which is a, a x0. If we doubled, doubling h0 to 2h0 means that your x0 will double also, right? Because it's a linear term. If I make that, that's going to be four of this. So it's going to be double the number of cars. And how many cars did he do? He has six cars. So we would say 12 cars. On the axes below, sketch a graph of the vertical component of the stunt cyclist's velocity as a function of time from immediately after the cyclist leaves the ramp to immediately before. So vertical component of velocity immediately before it lands. It's just on the vertical axis, close to indicate the initial final velocity components in terms of h0, theta0, m0, and physical constants. Take the positive direction to be upward. So we're going to start with an initial velocity, um, v0, and we're going to end almost with an opposite, like negative. So we're going to say from there to there. Because it's a linear function. He's, he's accelerating. Um, and his vertical component starts with an initial vertical component, and then its slope is uh, you know, 9.8 meters per second squared in the downward direction. And so this is the v0. And we said v0 was square root of 2g h0. Is that what we said it was? Uh, 2g h0. So you got to take the square root of that. So this is square root of 2g h0 on the vertical axis. And, do, 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 and the initial and final vertical components to, it leaves the ramp immediately before it lands on the second ramp. And so here's negative square root of 2g h0. The reason it's symmetric like this, by the way, there's a couple ways to think about the, the velocity being the same, but just downward in this direction. One is conservation of energy. During this motion, assuming no air resistance, which is what our kinematics equations assume also, that um, there's no there's the same kinetic energy here and here because they have the same gravitational potential energy, and there's no energy loss during that path. So you can say it has to have the same kinetic energy, just sort of down. You can also think of from kinematics, the horizontal component will be the same, but the vertical component will be down. Anyway, but uh, regardless, um, that's uh, what that one will look like.